I guess my most viral videos are the ones where I'm standing side by side with a client and basically violating them. People have been trying to cancel me for 35 years. This guy's an animal. <laughs> Beijing and Shanghai. Suddenly, you have me, the TikTok tailor. I am Roshan Malwani and my handle everywhere is at Sam's Taylor. Little white men scurry to me like rats. They don't even want a suit. They just want to be on my TikTok. Three roll to bang, bang, kapow. So I have 1.7 million followers on TikTok. I don't care about the numbers. I care about making suits and selling suits. I have them absolutely stacked in my signature details. Glorious, esteem ask. I guess my most viral videos are the ones where I'm standing side by side with a client and basically violating them. Oh my goodness, do I love opening up white girls. Yes, the Arab boys get gift wrap as well. Two gorgeous planets. This is all a bonus. I'm killing it. I'm killing it every day. I want to be a player on every front. It's not about ego. And rub away the paint. I think the first video that went truly viral was the Japanese Yakuza boy. Repay here is part of the Japanese mafia and we will look at his ass in a second. <laughs> I think that video just went huge instantly. That video became my the first meme and it just went meme after meme after meme. And I'll, I'll never forget this kid because his, his name is Repay. <laughs> so everywhere he goes in Hong Kong for the last two years, Japanese Yakuza, Japanese Yakuza, the whole of fucking Hong Kong, he can't go anywhere. He's the ja and the video keeps playing and playing and playing everywhere on every platform. Everybody has ripped that video. But poor guy, and he loves me for it. And this is why do people beat down my door to do a video? Okay, because they want to be the next replay. They want to be the next white men from the United States scurry to me like rats, like mice, like maggots, like the savages they are. They want to be the next young Chinese boy. Young Chinese boy, little Chinese boy, young tiny Chinese boy. Let me open him up. You know how much I love opening up young Chinese boys. They just want to be violated by me. Beijing and Shanghai. Beijing and Shanghai. If I post that video and it gets a million views or two million views or three million views, etc., etc., they can be seen everywhere. And I have a platform for that to happen. Are you happy? Always happy. I want my legacy to be stamped in. I want to be everywhere. Stam Sailor has been a successful business since we opened in 1957. We've gone from strength to strength. My granddad wasn't a very smart man, but he was a very hard worker. He came from absolutely fucking nothing. My grandfather used to sleep in the shop when there was no one around. He'd take naps because it was just brutal hours. My dad would work in the mornings from the age of like 11. Even I worked in the shop summer, Easter holidays. I mean, it's a pretty crazy story. Here I am at the entrance of my shop. Sam's Taylor, you can see me here with my father and President Bush Sr. Me with Sigourney Weaver, me with Kate Moss, my dad with Celine Dion. These are many photos of the medals that my father has received from everybody around the world, most famously receiving his MBE from Prince William. This is the real deal, right? So there's his MBE medal. I mean, he built this amazing business and worked with everybody. So a lot of people started descending upon Sam's Taylor after that. He sort of went viral in his way. And as I grew up, he continued to become more famous through sheer hard work and luck. He's just remarkable. At the same time, he can't do what I do. They're not buying suits. You've got to stop showing up here and milking me for videos. I was born famous and I've managed to catch the times at every stage of my career. I am an early adopter. I started posting on Facebook as soon as Facebook was available. And I copped a lot of abuse from my dad and uncle. He goes, what the fuck are you doing putting customers on Sam Taylor Facebook? These guys are yelling at me. We're going to be hacked. The coin has flipped so much that every day my gra dad is grabbing me. Do a photo with him. Do a video. Take a video with him. He is gift wrapped. This guy's a fucking animal. <laughs> Oh, he's fucking, oh my God, talking about this sweet ass. And then I think it was Tom Segura who first led a lot of his followers to my reel. I think my videos are less risky now because I'm very conscious of the social media community guidelines and all this stuff. But before, I think I was more out there. I was smacking away, abusing away, being funny, kissing, licking, sniffing, whatever. I don't think that I could push the boundary anymore. I wouldn't pull my dick out. Uh, I think the fun is consensual. Let us look at his planets. 
the overwhelming majority still of our clients are not ass smacking seekers. <laughs> this is just a fad that's going on right now. And it's ass smacking today. It might be ass rubbing tomorrow, but I have the liberty and the platform to enjoy that luxury. I don't think we're breaking any guidelines. If we inspect a 16 year old, we inspect them with a hanger. How old are you? 16. Say it again. I'm 16. I have zero consent here. Which hanger would you like? Let's use the wooden one. If we inspect someone over 18, they are, they're literally on their knees begging us to smack their asses. I've done great videos and I've had people say, oh, you didn't hit me hard enough. Well, can we do it again? You know, there's all these videos of commentary videos all across uh, YouTube and stuff yeah. saying that this is sexism, this is sexism, fuck this guy. If every channel shuts me down, I will still thrive because I make a great product. They're brilliant fucking suits. And you think I'm worried about being canceled? Bro, come after me. People have been trying to cancel me for 35 years because I don't think there's anybody out there doing this kind of stuff and saying the diabolical stuff that I say. I'm dripping wet for this tight, white Italian. I'm going to devour this little Chinese boy. I say whatever that comes off the top of my head, right? So if he's a young Chinese boy, he's a young Chinese boy. If he's an Australian white guy, he's an Australian white guy. I want to show my audience who my clients are. He's a Chinese boy, he's a Chinese boy. He should be proud that he's a Chinese boy. I'm proud that I'm an Indian boy. Even if you hate me, you're telling me you don't want to come and meet me and try one of my suits? Come on, you can hate on me all you want. I've created a phenomena. I'm not going to compare myself to the Eiffel Tower, right? What is there to do in Hong Kong? I'm like a beacon there. We don't have an Empire State Building. We don't have a Statue of Liberty. We don't have Buckingham Palace. What the fuck do we have here? Suddenly, you have me, the TikTok tailor. What the fuck else is there to do? I'm out there to entertain people. I'm out there to spread my culture, my son's success, my daughter's achievements, my father's achievements. I, I'm showcasing my clients. I'm showcasing my work. I'm making my clients happy. Everyone in the videos is consensual. This is a, an amazing blessing.